The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In his name, welcome to the parish church of St. Columba and to this service of worship. Let us in silence prepare ourselves for the worship of Almighty God. Let us worship God. Relaxing into restfulness, into the posture and peace of prayer, we still ourselves that in this sanctuary silence we may be fed by the food of heaven, nourished by the mystery divine, the mystic numinous. Let us pray. Infinite companion, creation's composer, whose beauty is manifested in nature's libretto, in the long grasses dancing to the wind score, in the buzzard's soaring cadenza, whose wisdom is gold in the seam of faith, in scripture's limitless depths, in the soul's devotion, rapture and praise. Holy God, whose speech is silence, whose message is love, compassion and forgiveness, bless us with sacred words that will set us free, with friendships that will support us, with hearts made whole and love enough within to share with those around us. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, absolve you of every wrong, and afford you time for the amendment of life. In a cosmos charged to overflowing with eternity, may we be sensitive to your touch, transcendent God, 
with eyes to see what cannot ever be seen, with imagination ignited by mystery, with lives in tune with your symphony. Amen. Our lesson today is taken from the Gospel of St. Mark at chapter 15, beginning at verse 33. At midday, a darkness fell over the whole land, which lasted three hours in the afternoon. And at three, Jesus cried aloud, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hearing this, some of the bystanders said, listen, he is calling Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in sour wine and held it to his lips on the end of a stick. Let us see, he said, if Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and died. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who was standing opposite him saw how he died, he said, this man must have been a son of God. A number of women were also present, watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome, who all had followed him and looked after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many others who had come up to Jerusalem with him. Amen.
At midday, a darkness fell over the whole land. On the cross, Jesus called out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Christ gave a loud cry and died. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and a number of women were present, including Mary of Magdala. Last Sunday, we thought about Mary, her story and her faithfulness. This morning, may we briefly and from this distance stand with Mary and see what she saw. Mary had followed Jesus through town and village. She had been set free, healed of seven demons. Whatever her troubles, she was out of her mind with them. It was the rabbi from Nazareth who calmed and soothed her. In him, she found shalom, wholeness and peace. What did Mary experience at the foot of the cross? Executed between two criminals, can we begin to imagine the horror of watching a loved one die in such a manner? Later in the day, Mary accompanied the dead body of Christ as it was carried to a newly cut tomb. It is certainly true that human suffering and violence can lead us away from God. Many times I have heard people ask, how can God allow this? It is particularly poignant when we demand an answer to the suffering of our loved ones. Winner of the Nobel Peace Prize and the US Presidential Medal of Freedom, the late Eli Wiesel, a Holocaust survivor, framed this question unforgettably. A prisoner at both Auschwitz and Buchenwald, Wiesel told the story of being forced by the Nazis to witness the hanging of three prisoners, one of whom was a child. As Wiesel watched the executions, as if in slow motion, he heard someone behind him ask, where is merciful God? Where is he? At a signal, the three chairs on which the prisoners stood were tipped. There was total silence in the camp. Being heavier, the men died immediately, but the young boy lingered between life and death for over half an hour. Again, the man behind Wiesel asked, for God's sake, where is God? Wiesel said that from within him, he heard a voice answer, where is he? This is where, hanging here from this gallows. What did Mary of Magdala see and feel at the foot of the cross? The Gospel writer said, at midday a darkness fell over the whole land. That darkness was not merely an absence of sunlight, it was an absence of humanity. It was the presence of intolerable suffering and evil deeds. Jesus asked of God, why have you forsaken me? A hard lesson for people of faith to learn is that God gives humanity freedom and God never takes that freedom back. We are made in the image of God. We are God bearers which means that we are to make moral decisions, decisions of life and death, even if those decisions lead to torture and murder. God did not stop Cain 
from murdering his brother Abel. And neither did God stop Pharaoh from murdering every newborn Hebrew boy. What then is faith? For some, faith is optimism. No doubts and no sorrows. It is cheerfulness. For others, it is an intellectual assent. We believe in the doctrines of the church, traditionally expressed. For yet others, and usually atheists, faith is the opposite of reason. It is adherence to religious authority and a blind leap into irrational and superstitious thought. It is belief in fairy stories and supernatural miracles. For me, faith is not happy feelings, trust in philosophical doctrines, and neither is it superstition or incredible belief in supernatural miracles. I prefer to speak of faith as an awareness, an atmosphere in which we live, and a sea in which we swim. Faith is a consciousness of the consciousness of the universe. It's fluid and not static. It's open to new possibilities and insights. God is present, but paradoxically, always just out of reach. As an aside, I think that atheism is an incredible position to hold, the most daring of all dogmas. Atheism is the belief that as human beings, we are able to say that we know everything that could possibly be known and therefore we can confidently exclude the possibility of God. Despite human fallibility and our very limited understanding of the universe and the nature of reality, atheism is an absolute assertion. For me, it's an incredible belief, defying credibility, one might say irrational. Faith, then, for me, is wider awareness. But what is it for you? The Christian story is that the elusive mystery we call God is present in the world's darkest moments. Is that what Mary of Magdala saw when she looked on the face of the agonized Jesus? For early Christians, the cross was a defiant sign. It said that God was present in the very depth of human suffering. Though evildoers may have done their worst, God was present in the gutters of humanity, among the slaves, the poorest, the excluded, and the crushed. Not confined to the temples of Rome, the abundant groves, monuments, and sacred altars, God was present among the so-called wretched and unclean in silence and through tears Mary saw God in the dying Christ in the poetry of the crucifixion story we are told that the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom in the Jewish temple the Holy of Holies was the most sacred place on earth in which to encounter the divine. It was separated from the rest of the temple by a curtain. In the eyes of the early church, God was to be encountered in the crucified Christ. This was now the holiest place on earth. Mary of Magdala saw that. Sometimes it is our most tragic experiences which can lead to faith. Again, let me share a story from the Holocaust, albeit of a different kind. 
the neurologist, philosopher, psychiatrist, and Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl told the story of being a young man in a concentration camp. Stripped of his clothing, he was sent into the showers. To his surprise and relief, it was just a shower. Afterwards, he was given the clothes of someone who had been killed. Frankel had not been a man of faith. In one of the pockets, he found a piece of paper on which was written a prayer. It was the Shema, a Jewish prayer from the book of Deuteronomy. He read it. Listen, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Like never before in his life, those words spoke to him directly to his heart. Listen, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. A flame of faith ignited within him and never let him go. In his darkest moment, having been through the showers, Frankel found faith in God from the very words of Scripture. God does not take back our freedom, but never is God truly absent. Stand at the foot of the cross. What do you see? Amen. Let us pray. 
refreshing rain falling on parched grass, flowers blooming, delicate scents released, busy bees visiting plants to sustain life, rich soil feeding roots, the basis of our vivid landscape. The rhythm of nature moving in seasonal time brings joy in an environment perpetually in motion, where moments of action, peace and stillness mix, fleeting moments of calm amidst the messiness and haste of life, and God is experienced, felt and known. We remember the Queen and all those who hold positions of political power, praying that they are ever guided to do right in their actions, remembering all those who are oppressed, exploited and denied their proper rights. We pray for those who are living with the trauma of war, for whom peace seems ever absent. We lift up those for whom climate change affects everyday existence and all who campaign for a change in understanding and practice. We pray for everyone weighed down by anxiety, for themselves or their loved ones, facing difficulties for which they can see no solutions, that they experience healing, restoration and comfort. We bring silent prayers of our own burdens, both those of love and those which lie heavily upon our hearts. As we continue to seek an understanding of God, may we experience the healing touch of Christ in our lives, bringing us a sense of peace and wholeness. We give thanks for those who have shaped our current understanding and pattern of church, for saints, martyrs and mystics whose insights we value and whose wisdom we honour. As we remember with love and gratitude the lives of those who are no longer with us, we commend them to eternal rest and unchanging affection and pray that we who remain can continue to flourish in their absence. These prayers we offer in Jesus' name and whose words to his first followers we now say together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.